Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to Shangri-La Frontier episode 21 in which Sanraku will begin his new quest, I would assume. Either that or we will uh, just have some slice of life moments. Mm, perhaps Sanraku finally uh, looking at the new update uh, with with Ray. That would be nice. Uh, although I don't think their relationship will move on quite as fast. <laughs> I think we're still gonna have to wait quite a while uh, before they actually start traveling together and adventuring and stuff like that. Uh, I'm honestly not 100% sure uh, where are we going to go now. And uh, it's always the case with uh, when a new arc begins, right? Uh, the Weathermon arc has uh, ended, now a whole new arc begins. Uh, we even got a um, like intro screen to the new arc, right? Uh, you, you guys told me in the comments that uh, it uh, coincides with like the end of one of the volumes, and now a new volume uh, essentially begins. So uh, unlikely that they will cover an entire volume within like four or five episodes. So I'm praying for season two. <laughs> I really hope it's already been greenlit. <clears throat> but we'll see. Uh, if my voice is a little bit coarse, and uh, I'm hearing that it probably is, uh, I basically just woke up so it hadn't had the time to like warm up and stuff. And uh, another bit of uh, housekeeping. Uh, if you want to vote on what I'm going to watch next, as far as non-seasonal shows go, there is a vote going on, there's a poll, so check it out somewhere on the channel. Uh, okay, so, previous episode. Uh, previous episode was a summary of the arc, was the nice uh, epilogue, you could say, to the Weathermon arc. Uh, Sanraku returned, uh, was welcomed by Emul, uh, glomped many a time by her, and uh, he was also given a new mission by, um, by Visage. Uh, that mission being... Um, yeah, that mission being that Sanraku has to travel somewhere. I have it all noted down, actually, so, so let me check it out. Because, uh, because it's important. It's important what he has to find. Uh, where is it? Wherefore art thou? There it is, yeah. Uh, he has to travel to, like, dark something, and he has to find the receiver delta, positioner delta, and transmitter delta, which are very scientific names, so probably something that comes from the previous era, uh, the era that Setsuna and Weathermon are from. So we are going to slowly see the sci-fi elements of Shangri-La Frontier emerging, maybe, would be nice, would be cool. And um, also we know that there is the Bahamut um, that they have to defeat. And uh, Bahamut is not one of the known uh, unique monsters. So my bet is that... <clears throat> my bet is that those items are either drop from the Bahamut or are guarded by the Bahamut. So Sandra has to travel. Doesn't even know where because it's not on his map. He will need to buy a whole new map. And then procure those items so that he can get uh, training from Visage, uh, enter the next stage of uh, Vorpal Soul or whatever. So that's something we're going to have to do. That's something that this arc might cover, or maybe the next one, we don't know. Uh, Sanraku also got a couple of items uh, from the fight with Weathermon. Uh, one of them is a... Uh, it's not a scroll, it's something that holds Weathermon's techniques, Weathermon's combat techniques. Everything, including the uh, clear sky and sky clear. Unfortunately, to learn those moves, Tanaraku needs uh, access to ancient machinery, I think it was called. Something like that. 
again evokes um, images of the past advanced civilization so we are probably going in uh, in that direction here both with this item and with visages visages request Sanraku is of course very much excited although those are sword techniques and Sanraku uses uh, dual daggers so I wonder how's that gonna work will he have to use a sword we have to remember that he did get the sword from um, uh, from a pencil gum that she dropped right this creepy sword that like covers her arm and stuff so maybe he's gonna have to use that to use Weathermon's attacks that would be interesting and the second item he got uh, was uh, what I initially thought uh, to be a bag of holding, something that merges with him and gives him access to a space, to a warehouse. I thought that warehouse is, uh, you know, not an actual warehouse, just the storage the size of a warehouse, and you open a rift in reality, you reach for something and take out that very thing. No, it's a literal place that Sanraku gets teleported to if he wants to use the storage. And it's also not empty. It's filled with all sorts of stuff. Uh, it seems like mounts, armor, weapons from the past era. All of them look very technomagical-like. So is he going to make use of them? That's going to be another really cool thing. Uh, how's he going to make use of this space? Could uh, people travel inside of it? Could he cram Emul inside and thus protect her during their travels? Right? It would be nice to see uh, how all of that works. And uh, we also got a little bit of a B-plot, and that was the developers of the game uh, meeting up, uh, Jojo-ass-looking motherfuckers, <laughs> discussing, um, <clears throat> discussing or rather freaking out over the fact that someone did a little bit of a sequence break and defeated Weathermon before Weathermon was supposed to be defeated. Because apparently you're supposed to go through the unique monsters in order from the weakest to the strongest but someone didn't <laughs> and that someone was Sanaraku uh, Sanaraku, Pencil Gone and uh, Katsum of course he wasn't alone uh, so that was uh, interesting to see and kind of alleviated my fears of something fucky-wacky going on uh, with the um, with the game like an experiment or something like that it's still not out of the question but for the most part, it just seems like it's a game company run by weirdos who really just wanted to make a nice game. And that's all there is to it. Uh, it's all like very intense uh, and very sinister painted, but the behaviors of those characters just completely diffuse any sort of tension um, that there could be. And we also had a little bit of a subplot with Pencilgon uh, visiting Setsuna's uh, grave and having to uh, speedrun her way to the point where she was able to get flowers, get armor, and uh, arrive at the grave before it closed, because it only opens with a certain phase of the moon. And she did it. She managed. And uh, she's no longer a PKer, so her life is going to be a little bit easier, and she's going to be able to join Sanaraku and Katsu for more adventures without fear of getting uh, PK'd in revenge. Anything I'm forgetting about? I don't think so. Yeah, I think that's it. So, how about we just watch this episode? Uh, uh, oh, uh, the previous episode ended with Sanraku being inside of his warehouse, and that was a little bit of a cliffhanger. So I would assume uh, that now we're going to resolve that cliffhanger and Sanraku is going to browse through the wares available in the warehouse, for example. I don't know. Uh, we'll see that. And to do that, to see, we're gonna need our subs to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show. And I'm gonna have to ask you for support. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon or YouTube down below or not. Share my content, spread the word. It costs you nothing and helps a lot. And with that, we can start watching Shangri-La Frontier, episode 21 in 3, 2, 1, go. And we're getting the intro again. I was hoping we get rid of it. But alas. They're selling this like lime and lemon drink. And it's so fucking strong that I have to water it down. 
not strong as in you know alcohol content strong as in it's just fucking lemon juice with sugar oh and we're getting opening okay yeah a little bit of well i wanted to say a little bit of wasted time at the beginning but is opening this good really wasted time is it arguable I guess it gives me time to tell you about the poll. I finished uh, watching Magic Record recently, and with that I finished the Madoka Magica franchise. So now I need some other non-seasonal show to watch. And uh, the custom on the channel is that uh, you guys vote on what that thing is going to be. Uh, so there is a poll, I made a video on it, it might be somewhere in the corner card thingamajig. Or it might not be. I know, we'll see. You can find it on the channel, worst case scenario. Uh, so uh, my patrons are able to vote on that. So if you're interested, you might want to check it out. And uh, there are some interesting shows on the list. Uh, there is uh, Scrapped Princess, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Yuki Yuna, plenty of others. Seven in total. So again, check it out if you want. I think it's gonna run for like another week maybe only two people voted so far after a week of the poll running so yeah i'd like to have at least like three votes maybe that would be ideal okay regardless Iran's cultivation and game progress <clears throat> where are we Oh, Katsu's place. Right, he is a uh, like competitive gamer. Uh, he's wheelchair bound. He's wheelchair bound. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's cool. Or is it just a advanced gaming chair? Honestly, I can't tell. <laughs> oh, it's like a VR pod thing. Huh. Okay. So it's not just like a headset. You can have a whole ass like pod. Interesting. Okay, so he can't use it yet. Oh, so everybody has it. Gotcha, it's not something unique to Sanraku. I mean, yeah, if you can't use them, then... Of course. Mmm. <laughs> okay. So it's not just like a level requirement, you also need a power source. Hmm. And also, would Sanraku even be able to equip a power armor? Oh, it's a drop from the Kirin. <laughs> uh, Bonded Rodeo, that's a great nickname. That's a great, like, country core band name. <laughs> Visage. A. A. Divine Blacksmith. 
Am I on to something or am I on to something? <laughs> Probably yes. Hmm. The unlock condition is fight Lycagon with Vorpal Spirit. What is Vorpal Spirit? Oh, fucking no, figure it out. Right, how much of a team do you make at this point, really? Fight the Lycagon and lose. That's basically all he knows. Mm, not just lose. Fight. And lose despite fighting, right? Be tenacious in your fight. I mean, those are the conditions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still embedded in his head. Oh, the sword. <clears throat> or... No, something else. Oh, the scales. Right, she didn't want to lose them after getting uh, killed. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. It's a very important and very powerful item, after all. She wouldn't want to lose it. And she has to return it. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, what's gold grinding for an MMO player, right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see the band on Sanraku's hand. Yeah, item laundering. Mm-hmm. Your items. So NPCs... Oh, right, we know that NPCs have affection level because uh, Sanraku's relationships with the bunnies in Rabituza. <coughs> hmm. Yeah, makes sense.
Hmm. So, uh, yeah. I thought they're explaining like a very basic concept here, but okay. So that's the difference. So could a PKer essentially protect their gear by technically borrowing it from someone else? Why did you give them to Sanraku then? You didn't want the scales to drop and you didn't want Saiger to see them? I think duping. No? Item returning. Huh. So they essentially work as a PK resistance resistant storage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, PK resistant storage. It wasn't handing over the scale that was the laundering, it was moving items into the scale that was the laundering. Okay. Yeah, important memento. <laughs> I mean, at least this time the crime is not murder. Mm-hmm. Let's do another one, shall we? <laughs> yes, I was hoping for that. I was hoping for that. Eat your fucking cake! <laughs> Who's the clan leader? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, who's the clan leader, but the other way. <laughs> I, I love their chemistry. I mean, it's a three-person clan. What's it matter who's the leader, right? Something with Setsuna? Oh, it, uh, the like w wolf heads one, something like that. Yeah, uh, something with wolves. I didn't pay much attention, honestly. Wolfgang. Yeah, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. A probably a head of a wolf. <laughs> Humst. Someone of import. 
they're obstructing his face for a reason. Oh, he's from uh, Sager's Guild. No, we haven't seen anybody like that. <laughs> Who? Never heard of them. <laughs> That's why you need a guild, uh, a guild house. Okay, let's split up. I love this energy. I really love the, their group's energy. <laughs> and off to Rabituza we go. That was air! <laughs> That's not Emul. Oh, it is Emul. It's probably going to be useful to you. Are you sure about that? To the land of the rabbits. Oh, <clears throat> why would Vash be gone? What new skills did we get? Ah, of course. <laughs> you should have brought more money. Yes. <clears throat> Visit B, maybe? Yeah, wouldn't hurt. Is Vash an ancient craftsman? He's divine craftsman. Is that higher or lower? Okay, so yeah, Vash can handle it. Yeah, sure, let's level her up. Okay, so you can like raise NPCs? Interesting. <laughs> We're entering the B arc. Okay, how do we do that though? <laughs> the Bilak cultivation arc. Okay, I really like where it's going. <laughs> I didn't expect it, but I do very much enjoy it. <clears throat> I 
I was half expecting a new ED, to be honest with you. It's... It's been a while since I've watched a show so consistently good as Shangri-La Frontier, you know? Most of the shows that I'm watching this season are... Well, okay, Freedom is also consistently good. Uh, but the other shows I'm watching this season or the previous seasons usually had their ups and their downs. Right? And the ups were like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I love this episode. And the downs were, uh, whatever, like I can see where they were going with it, but uh, it, it wasn't that great. No, not the case with Shangri-La. Every episode is like, hell yeah, I love it. <laughs> and what's the mini? Making oikatsu? What do you mean making? Oh... Yeah, uh, character editor. Pursue the fish. <laughs> yes. Yes, actually. And he lost all the levels anyway, so he's behind. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right, let's watch it again, shall we? Yes, we shall. Uh, skippity, skip, skippity, hop. And uh, we get our first look at uh, Katsu. Um, Keiuomi, rather, yeah. Keiuomi, winner of the Cyber Cup, winner of all sorts of um, competitions. Plenty of VR headsets and uh, full dive headsets, I would assume. And he's playing a random visual novel thing? Yeah, something like that. I'd originally meant it to just kill a little time. And yeah, I don't think it's a wheelchair. I think it's a uh, it's just a gaming chair. If he had no like control of his legs, he would not be crossing them after all, right? Yeah, it's just an elaborate gaming chair with... A full dive capabilities, apparently. Uh, I thought it would be nice. Well, from a story standpoint, it would be nice. It would be interesting, rather, to see him wheelchair bound, because it would make uh, full dive games so like important. Because in full dive, he can walk, he can run, he can jump. Things that he cannot do in real life. Right? That would be nice. Uh, it was a plot point in um, Log Horizon, uh, where one of the characters... Uh, there was like a brother-sister duo, and uh, the brother was wheelchair-bound, but after getting into the Log Horizon world, he was not. And it was like an escape for him from his, uh, from his wheelchair to be able to, you know run and jump and walk in in a game, in a full dive. 
Now, the game later became a real world, so it was probably even better for him, but still, point stands. So I thought we were going for a similar plot point here, but no. No, no, no. And just a week until the big tournament. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, not gonna work on the tournament. <laughs> I'm going into Shangri-La. He's addicted. All of them are addicted to Shangri-La at this point. Well, not quite. Sanaku still plays his trash games every now and then. The Serpent's Apple. And yeah, apparently everybody got the... Uh, the storage thing. I really like the detail of the storage band being visible on Sanraku's right arm all the time. Uh, we've seen as he got it that it just merged into his hand and it became invisible for a moment there. So I thought they're going to go for the um, very usual cop-out of uh, character gets something, it merges with their body, we don't have to change the character's model, right? We can draw the character as usual, nothing changes about them, and they still get the capabilities of whatever. Not the case here. He got the armband and it's shown. They draw it at all times. Uh, nice attention to detail. I can really appreciate it. So what now, what now? Uh, yeah, the items are not useful because the armors and uh, machines require a reactor. And the weapons cannot be used by just anybody. They are to be used with the power armor. <sighs> right. So yeah, kind of useless. He has the reactor, but it's damaged and you need a divine blacksmith to fix it. Thankfully, Visage can fix it. Hooray. Not so easy. Visage is gone. I like the chain of like... Oh, we get the thing, but we cannot use it. We have the thing that's needed to use them, but the person, but it's broken. We have a way to fix it, but the person is not there. We might have another way to fix it, but she's not there yet. Right, this nice like roller coaster, I guess you could say. I like it. I like this like chain of events here. And yeah, unique scenario. And, uh, right, the unique scenario is probably very hard for them to replicate. Especially since we don't know what actually triggered it. It might actually be that you have to avoid like taking damage from the Lycagon and deal 200 crit um, attacks. It could be just the crit attacks. It could be just avoiding the damage. It could be just lasting long enough in battle at a given level. It could be encountering Lycagon at a given level. It could be neither of those, and it could be something more abstract, like your tenacity in the fight with Lycagon, right? Not giving up and not dying and not running away from the arena, not letting Lycagon kill you, but trying to fight while being severely underpowered to the last possible moment. Not losing through a fault of your own, but losing through the fault of the Lycagon simply being stronger. Could be that. Uh, but yeah, the combination is, of course, that uh, under level 20, against the randomly encountered unique monster, landed 200 critical hits with a Vorpal weapon specifically, and didn't take any damage. And yeah, of course, it's probably not very much doable for them, since uh, Katsu is a health tank, so he's not focusing on avoiding damage, he's, avo he's focusing on... Uh, tanking that damage. Uh, pencil gun isn't much for a uh, dodge tank either, so, right? It's only Sanraku to be crazy enough, to be to be an acrobat asshole, acrobatic asshole enough uh, to do that. And yeah, I mean, he kept true to his promise, he did tell them about the condition, so, or what he believes to be the condition, and the scales. Uh, I'm not sure why she gave him the scales. It sounds like a little bit contrived here. 
a little bit too contrived for me to understand fully, I think. Mm, yeah, I didn't want to lose the uh, the scales, so I laundered it. I gave it to Sanraku. Yeah. But then we learn that it doesn't matter anyway. Because the scales are not yours. The scales belong to the Golden Scale organization. So even if you had it on you, right, like if you gave it to Sanraku, it would still drop from Sanraku. But it didn't because it doesn't belong to Sanraku or Toa. Or, or Pencil Gun. So if Pencil Gun just kept it, it wouldn't drop anyway because it doesn't belong to her technically. So why did she give it to Sanraku? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Even if I'd been carrying the scales, their ownership by the golden scales wouldn't have changed, so they wouldn't have been sold off. Oh, uh, they'd be dropped as an object. Right, so she wanted to avoid dropping them? Probably. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. She fed her loot to the scales to protect it from being sold off. The scales wouldn't be sold off anyway, but would still be dropped. So she gave them to Sanraku so that they aren't dropped. Okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah, I managed to make heads and tails of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's a nice exploit. I fully expected her to just uh, pull out a duplicate of out of her inventory. I fully expected an item duping glitch. But I guess Shangri-La is, is too good of a game to avoid silly, simple exploits like that, right? And she gets Tome of Truth, the Tomb, the tomb Guard. Uh, that's the lore. That Sanraku also got. And a flower pin of bygone prayers. A memento of Setsuna. Uh, that I wonder if it has any other purpose to it. Right? Like Sanraku got something extremely powerful. The skill book. The clear sky skill book. It's extremely fucking powerful. If he can learn those skills. And uh, Pencil Gun just got a pin. I'm assuming... I'm assuming this pin might work similarly um, to uh, similarly to uh, what call it Emul's pendant uh, that she gave to Sanraku, right? It might be important for some other unique scenario, perhaps. Uh, where are you? There we go. Uh, pen. Still guns. Mm. A hairpin from Setsuna is important. Yeah, that's my gut feeling. Flower pin of bygone prayers. Yeah, yeah, and that's why she was able to launder them. And yeah, we need a clan. I was waiting for this moment. I really was. I really was hoping that they are going to create a clan. Uh, I was kind of... It could kind of go like two, two different ways. And uh, I really found them both equally likely. Either they remain just separate. They're going solo about the game. They're doing whatever they want to do. And whenever one of them finds uh, a new unique monster... They call up the other two, and they uh, come together again. They might uh, even out their levels if it if it's necessary, and the three of them go after the unique monster. And uh, you know they just spread apart and meet together every now and then when it's necessary. The other way would be, of course, to form a. Uh, yeah, three ways actually, because the other way would be to form a permanent party. 
and go about playing the game together in a party. Wouldn't probably work for them that well, because not all three of them can be online at all times, and they also have their own goals, their own pursuits, so... Right? Like, uh, Oikatsu has to level up right now, and uh, Sanraku and Pencilgon being there and leveling up while they don't need to do that wouldn't really do much for them, so it wouldn't make sense for them. And the third way, which is what they're going with, is creating a guild or a clan or something of the sort to, you know, be tied together, maybe have a hideout, stuff like that, but still have the freedom to go about the game separately and have an easy way to connect and to join and to have like a common stash for items, stuff like that, right? So yeah, they went with the clan and uh, I'm glad. I really like how it went. I, I love that it's the loser who has to be the clan leader. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I love that it's the loser, honestly. Unique Hunters, Outrage, Gold Rush, Pike Mounted Heads, Trash Game Alliance, Pelsin Gonchan and her errand boys, and Wolfgang. Uh, like, you can mostly see who thought of which name. Trash Game Alliance, that would be Sanraku. Pencil Gonchan and her errand boys, that would be Pencil Gon. Uh, Outrage. I know, Unique Hunters, maybe Pencil Gon as well. Gold Rush. Sanraku, maybe. Pike Mounted Heads, seems like Pencil Gon's thing. Outrage and Wolfgang, maybe Oikatsu. I know. But those three, like Trash Game Alliance, those two, Trash Game and Alliance and Pencil, Go Pencil Gonchan and her errand boys, those are like clear uh, who, who made them. And yeah, we are choosing Wolfgang. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I love that Stanak would just be fine with Pencil Gonchan and her errand boys. <laughs> That's also a great name. That's also a great name. Honestly, wouldn't surprise me if someone like took the idea and somewhere in some MMO there was a character, there was a guild named Pencil Gonchan and her errand boys. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I know that when uh, Log Horizon was airing and I was playing BDO, yeah, I was playing BDO, there was a clan named after, uh, after Shiro's clan. Can't remember the name of it, but yeah, I remember there was a clan like that. And I wanted to make a clan with that name, but it was taken. So I had to use... Uh, what did I use? What was the clan name that me and my friend picked? I think it was... Yeah, I think we named that BDO clan after the Arc Age clan that we were in. It was Gentleman's Tea Time? Something like that. Regardless, that doesn't matter. Let's continue. We will henceforth become wolves venturing through the world of Shangri-La Frontier in search of unique monsters. Uh, curiously enough, there already is a clan who has a wolf as their logo and is also looking for unique monsters. And, yeah, of course, you're the leader, you figure out the emblem. And uh, there we go. Wolf clan looking for unique monsters. Speak of the devil. Yeah, this is great. I was wondering how's it gonna go for the rest of them, because Sanraku already is on the run, right? On the run because he's notorious for having Emul. Uh, the other two weren't notorious, but now they are, because the um, unique scenario, not unique scenario, the, uni the unique monster they beat. And now they are also being chased. Yeah, they run away, everybody has their goal, Oikatsu has to do some leveling to get back to speed, um, Pencilgon has to return the scales, Sanraku has to take care of the reactor, and they all split, and they all run away. I really, really like this energy of a clan that just runs away from people. 
Amul is here. Hidden. Harumph. And yeah, Rabituza is really useful, even for a hiding spot alone. Actually would be nice. Would actually be nice if... Um, uh, if Pencilgon and Oikatsu also figured out a way to get to Rabituza, either through Lycagon or maybe through some other means. We know that Rabituza has a deep connection to the plot line of unique monsters, so it wouldn't surprise me if there were other ways to get into Rabituza, perhaps by fulfilling other conditions, also Vorpal related, probably, um, regarding other unique monsters that might get them in. Um, I'm saying that it would be nice because it would make for a perfect uh, gathering place for them, right? If they could maybe have their guild house here in Rabituza. There's no chance of anybody raiding them because they're the only ones who know of this place. They're the only ones who know of this unique scenario, right? It would be the safest possible place to have a guild house. If it's possible to have a guild house here, that is. Yeah, Visage is gone, apparently. I was expecting us uh, to see like a list of skills that Sanraku got. Uh, but no, not this time around. I'm broke. <laughs> she's great. She's, she's so money hungry. Yeah, Vash cannot fix it. B cannot fix it either because she's not an ancient craftsman. Yet. We're gonna make an ancient craftsman out of her. I don't know how, but we will. <laughs> and Sanraku will see to it. Uh, I'm assuming you need to, like, give her unique schematics or something, and uh, with each unique schematic crafted her blacksmith level raises and since Sanraku declared that he will help her he will probably be an errand boy for a while I can oh hmm yeah I, I was wondering how are we going to finish this uh, season seeing how uh, the Weatherman fight was essentially the climax of it but I wonder uh, I wonder if the plot line from now until the end of the season is going to be just raising B. It's not like full on next arc, but like a first mini arc. And maybe B will need some unique uh, parts, some unique drops from some sort of a monster. And Sanraku will have to go after it. And uh, that will be the big final battle. And the final episode of the show will be uh, B actually raising to the rank of an ancient craftsman. Maybe. Although I feel like that would be too fast. Yeah. I feel like it would be too fast. Like, we shouldn't expect the reactor to be fixed quickly. Right? Because if B becomes an ancient craftsman, and if she manages to craft, to fix the reactor by the end of the, ep of the season... That means that whenever the next season begins, uh, the Wolfgang will have one reactor to their name. Or, well, to the to Oikatsu's name, but I don't think he would be uh, that much opposed to lend it to the other members if they were in need of it. Right? For example, if it would make sense for uh, Sanraku to equip speedy power armor to beat the next unique monster and... Uh, Power Armors wouldn't give that much of a boost to Oikatsu or Pencilgon. He would probably lend the core to Sanraku, right? I think it would make things too... Not too easy, but I think too fast. It would be too fast if they were to get access to one uh, machine or... Um, or um, Exosuit by the end of the season. I think it would be a little too fast. So I guess I'm still at the point of... I, I'm still at the start line thinking about what's gonna be the uh, the end of, of the season. I know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. 
Yeah, I, I really love this plot point. Yeah, we can make you an ancient craftsman. And I also love it as a game mechanic that you can raise NPCs, right? If you give uh, enough orders to a uh, to a blacksmith, if you have them create enough items for you and those items are high enough level, they're eventually going to raise in their ranks and they're going to become a master craftsman and then an ancient craftsman and then a divine craftsman. And you won't have to necessarily look for a divine craftsman. You can do that. Or you can take the craftsman from the like first village you visit and raise them in the levels. That's just a cool mechanic from like a game standpoint. And yeah, of course you can do that. I have full confidence in you. It's I'm not saying that because I really need you to become an ancient craftsman. I really trust in you. Be I, I, absolutely you're gonna be an ancient craftsman like no other. And of course, Emil is also hyping the map because she loves her sister. Of course, she does. Ah, uh, the plan to cultivate Bilak. You're gonna need some. What are those like cultivation things in in Wuxia? Elixirs, yeah, elixirs and like magic plants and shit like that. <laughs> Alternatively, it could be like a princess maker kind. Of... Princess maker is it called? No, it's not prince. Princess maker is something else entirely. I think <laughs> there is a. Uh, there's a genre of games where you... It started with a game where you raise a princess, right? You, uh, like, tell her to... Oh, it's Monday, so you go to the classes. Uh, Thursday, you go to train some uh, fencing. Wednesday, you train magic. And then you would be faced with, like, a, a event. And if you don't have enough uh, magic aptitude, for example, by that time, then your princess dies. And if you have enough magic by that time, then you can continue playing. And right, Th there was a game like that. It might have actually been named. Pri I'm I'm looking it up on Steam, because I know it's on Steam. I'm just not sure if it's Princess Maker or is Princess Maker something, uh, a game that is like not entirely PG, to 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 say the least. Uh, come on, Steam, open, open up. Yeah, Princess Maker, I was correct. There's five fucking Princess Makers already. Jesus. Princess Maker 5 has mixed reviews, though, so it, it's probably not that good. And yeah, Princess Maker, exactly what I meant. Uh, forget what I said about the NSFW thing. I never said anything about that. <laughs> and yeah, the mini is Oikatsu. Or, well, Kei Uomi creating Oikatsu. And everything has to do with the katsu. In pursuit of the katsu, in pursuit of the fish. Uh, speaking of character creation, I wonder if Pencil Gone is gonna wear the brooch, the pin she got from Setsuna. I'm gonna have to be on the lookout. Actually, did she already wear it, maybe? Mm, no. So yeah, maybe maybe in the future. And yeah, who would be stupid enough to be a wanderer, right? <laughs> who would do that? What sane person? <laughs> no sane person. Sadak would, though. Let's go, Shangri-La Frontier! That's a nice bit of backstory to uh, to K to Oikatsu. All right, all right, man, what a good start to a week, right? It's Monday. Haven't even had breakfast yet. I just woke up and sat down to record Shangri La, and I really couldn't have asked for a better start to the week. Honestly, great episode. I really, really, really liked it. It had so many 
just individual things that I enjoyed. Uh, the fact that they now have a clan. That's cool. The reactor being a big plot point, being a big um, big thingamajig that they're gonna have to use at some point, and it introducing so much potential. That's cool. I love it. Uh, the fact that uh, Sarak will now have to be raising B to become an ancient craftsman. I love that plot point. I really like where it's going. And I also really like how many different uh, plot lines we have by now. Many shows and many stories in general uh, usually just focus on one thing, right? One plot line. For example, Sarak who got uh, the request from this uh, from Vizash to get the uh, the items, the Delta thingamajigs. So I half expected Sanraku to just go after them, to buy a map, to go and travel, to visit those lands and to try to find those things. I fully expected that. But no, we have other plot lines as well. And the one we got, the one that is a direct continuation of the current events, isn't the main one for now. Because we also have uh, the reactor, we also have B, we also have uh, running away from from fellow guilds, we also have so many other things. Uh, we have the clan establishing it, creating the emblem, finding a guild house. We have so many things that we can do. And uh, I like it. I like it because it means that they don't have to fear the downtime, so to speak. Um, very often uh, in stories that just follow one single plotline, you either have no downtime. So, for example, uh, you need something crafted. The main character needs something crafted, so they give it to a blacksmith. And by the end of the day, that something is crafted already. It's done. Or we get a time skip or stuff like that, or we don't have any events that would require waiting whatsoever. But because we have so many plot lines, we can wait. We can absolutely wait. Like, Sanraku can uh, grab a bunch of uh, special materials, grab a bunch of special schematic, dump them on B, and uh, instead of having a montage of B going through all of them in the span of a month, and uh, leveling up, we can just go and do something else while B is leveling up, right? We can buy a map and go explore the new uncharted places. We can uh, take a moment to try and find a guild house. We can even take a moment to try and explore the new uh, update. Saraku can uh, hang out with Saiger, right? All of those things can happen. And uh, whenever there's a break in that other plot point, we have another one to fall back on. So they don't have to fear the downtime in their storytelling, because there's always something to fill that downtime in. To fill that downtime with. And I like it. I really like the prospect of that. It also makes for a much more realistic story, right? Because how often are you waiting for something in one of your plot lines, on in one of your life's plot lines, and you go to do something else while you're waiting, right? There's a plot of looking for a job, you send a bunch of CVs, you're waiting for them, and you don't just sit and wait for responses, you go do something else, you go to the gym, you go pick up a new hobby, right? So it kind of works like that here. And I like it, and I appreciate it, and I cannot wait to see Visage return to be being an ancient craftsman. That would be amazing. That would be great. Think of how much um, how much affection will that get will that uh, net to Sandrak right from B and from Emul and from Visage. They help Sandrak who helped family, right? That's gonna be nice. I, I really love all of that as game mechanics as well. The affection system, the raising system, all of that. It's great. This show just works so well as a game. It works so well as a story. It just works really freaking well all together. And I think that's gonna be it.
from me for today so maybe you guys have something more to add on the topic if so say so in the comments down below what did you think of this episode my reaction my theories stuff like that and no spoilers please spoilers go to my discord if you want like this video if you did subscribe to be notified of future videos not only shangri-la but also freeran majo toyaju metallic rouge and others plenty coming in the future click the bell to be notified when i go live because i do sometimes support the channel if you want monetarily on patreon down below where for 10 bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows for five bucks you can vote on what those non-seasonal shows will be and for just a dollar you get a roll on the discord and a place in the credits you can also support me directly on youtube via memberships super thanks super chats stuff like that and if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever you don't have to share my content spread the word it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot and now we follow that out of the way that's gonna be it from me for today so as always you guys do the good stuff and i'm gonna see you in the next one cheers and here's my one for Patreons, QB without a net, the Cops Viver, Zay Rainer, Marco San, Dr. Watt, Akamancer, Marchi, Kali, Fassel, and Hans Peter. And you can join them if you want without having to raise a blacksmith on your own.